seems to be the theme of the morning. The first presidential debate of 2024 is now history. Our assessment is from Robert Costa. Everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. For Democrats, Thursday night's debate was a nightmare. I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump. Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look. President Joe Biden's performance at the Atlanta faceoff, viewed by more than 50 million, sparked a panic with a flurry of editorials and commentators pleading with 81-year-old Biden to drop out. It's kind of a DEFCON 1 moment. I do think people feel like that we are confronting a crisis. We're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if you will allow us to do that. It's not just panic, it's pain of what we saw tonight. What are members of the inner circle saying privately in the wake of this debate? There is an acknowledgement writ large that the president performed badly. It went poorly. It was a bad night. But there have not been any big sit downs, big soul searching sessions. It's just right back to work. New York Times reporter Katie Rogers covers the Biden White House and wrote a book that deeply examines the influence of First Lady Jill Biden. Based on your reporting, is there any sort of movement, any budging inside the Biden family about whether this run for re-election is worth it? I have not picked up on that. In fact, Rogers says calls for Biden to step aside will likely only strengthen the first family's resolve for him to stay in. The naysayers are key to understanding him. I mean, they they drive him. They help reinforce his idea of who he is. You can't overcome an obstacle if people don't put it in your way or life doesn't put it in your way. For Biden barreling through a thicket of pain, be it personal tragedy or political humiliation, is nothing new. After more than a half century in Washington, he has endured setbacks time and again, including when many Democrats and pundits counted him out in 2020. Biden, of course, ultimately prevailed in that race, defeating then-President Donald Trump. This past week made clear that winning a rematch will be no easy feat. Trump is on the march in the polls and often makes false statements, which he did at the debate on January 6, abortion and his record. After this debate, are Democrats more alarmed about Trump's possible return? Oh, for sure. Yeah, of course. More alarmed, absolutely. Faz Shakir is a top advisor to Bernie Sanders and managed Sanders' 2020 campaign when the Vermont senator ran against Biden for the nomination. We've seen all the headlines about major Democrats, President Obama, President Clinton, former Speaker Pelosi, name after name is coming out and saying they stand with Biden. Is that what's going on behind the scenes as well, or is it a bit of a different dynamic? I think there's some degree of trepidation behind the scenes as people line up behind him. Obviously, President Biden has to make a decision about whether he stays in this race, and I hope he does. And I hope that if he does, he has to make some changes. Think Biden will be replaced at the Democratic convention this August in Chicago? Think again. Biden already has won almost all of the roughly 4,000 pledged delegates. Unless he withdraws, they are expected to vote for him on the first ballot. The speculation about a possible shakeup of the Democratic ticket is almost feverish. What's the reality? Is anybody credible making moves behind the scenes? No, there's a, there's a lot of people looking ahead for years. At this point, this party is his, this nomination is his, and he's, gets, he's really the sole decider of the future course of uh, where he's going to go. For a while, you could make the argument that, you know, boy, it was tough defending Donald Trump as a Republican that we were going to get behind him. But today, it's a much harder thing for Democrats to explain why they would stick to Joe Biden.
New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu supported Nikki Haley in the Republican primary. She's genuine, she's likable. But has since endorsed Trump. Trump has his critics and his challenges, including a sentencing date in July for his criminal conviction in New York. But Sununu says the party is largely with him. And after this past week's debate, they are feeling better than ever. So you don't see any Democrat trying to make a play against Biden? No, no one, uh, no, if they're smart, I think they're gonna have that kind of realization that as much as they want a new candidate, they had their shot, they missed it, they gotta ride it out, hope that there's a second debate, hope that he does much better, hope that Trump creates a bigger problem for himself. The day after the debate with his wife at his side. When you get knocked down, you get back up. The president sought to reassure Democrats in North Carolina. I intend to win this state in November. The New York Times' Katie Rogers says for now, the Bidens seem convinced he has one more comeback left in what is very likely the last campaign of his long career. Both of them, when they feel the odds are rising against him, that is when they get feistier. They view obstacles as part of his long life in politics, almost associated with his political brand. But age is not an obstacle, it's a reckoner. And it is a different problem than the ones he has faced before.